In this video, we're going to learn how to sew a button. So I'm gonna start with my thread, um, and I'm gonna pull an arm's length thread. So I will take one end of my thread and then my spool on the other side. I'm gonna take my left arm and I will pull it up to my right shoulder, holding one end, and then I'm gonna extend my right arm all the way out so I get a strand that is as long as my right arm, okay? So this left hand is gonna hold one end of the thread the spool will be in my right hand, and I'm going to extend my hand, my right hand. Um, you guys can't really see this, but I'm going to extend my right hand all the way with my left hand holding the thread at my shoulder so that I have a length of thread that is just as long as my right arm. And this just helps um, keep the thread length manageable because if it's too long, then it can get tangled up, and that's no fun. So after cutting that, my arm's length, then I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle and you can see my needle has like a little, this is a hand sewing needle, it has a little hole at the top and I just put my thread straight through there. And then I'm going to pull my thread and I'll zoom out a minute so you can see. I'll grab my two ends so they're together. So I have my two ends right here and my needle over here and I'm gonna pull it so that the two threads are in even length and now I need to tie a knot. So to tie this knot, there's a couple things you can do. You can do your regular knot where you just make a loop and then you put, pull the ends through the loop, right? That's one way to do a knot. So if you feel like that's the best way for you, go ahead and do that. Um, there's a way that I like to do. Oh, I kind of accidentally tied one there. <laughs> um, there's a way that I like to do where I just, and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this really good. I take my finger right here and I'm gonna use my left hand to pinch my two ends together. So I'm just using my, my thumb and my index finger. And then I'll use my right hand to wrap the thread around one time. So I'm still pinching it and wrapping it. And now I'm going to roll the thread together. So my thumb is going to go to the right and my index finger is going to go to the left. And I'm just gonna roll that and keep rolling it. Um, I didn't quite work that time, so I'm going to do it again just so you can follow. But take my index finger, pinch with my thumb, wrap things around with my other fingers, and now I'm going to move my thumb to the right, my index finger to the left, and then I'll take my middle finger and it will come and it'll kind of pull right there. So we'll do that one more time. Just wrap it around. And you can see everything's kind of getting tangled. And then I use my middle finger. I just put it on my thumb like this. And then I pull with my right hand. And I now have a knot right there. So that's one way to do a knot. If you prefer the other way where you just um, like make a loop and then pull the answer, that's fine too. But this one is a little bit faster sometimes once you get the hang of it. I just trim my thread so that it's not gonna be in my way. So that's always a good thing to do. And then I will find my needle over on the other end. Here I have a little sample square and a button. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew this button on here. And I'll try and be pretty fast about it because sometimes it takes a little while to explain everything. But hopefully everything makes sense and I'll do a little pattern and you're gonna have to just follow the pattern on your own. So, I'm going to start by finding where I want my button. And I'm going to sew my button in the very middle. So I'm looking at the right side of my fabric here. And on the right side of my fabric, I'm going to put my needle straight through where I want my button. And you might feel weird about that because there's a knot now that we see on the right side. But my button's going to cover that up. And th there's not going to be anything to cover up the back. So the back I actually want to make sure is really, really neat. So now I'm going to come back through. And I'm just going to come back through right next to where I came through on the back. So you can see I'm just right next to where I already came through. Okay, and now I'm going to pick a hole to go through. So I'm just gonna go through this top right hole. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can have an X on the front and equal sign on the back or equal signs on the front and an X on the back. I'm going to do an X on the front, but it could be, if you want to do it the other way, that's fine too. Um, but the same principle applies. You're just going to have different shapes on different sides. So I'm going to go diagonal for my X. 
and I'll come through over here. So I came out on the back. And if I'm doing an X on the front, I need to do an equal sign on the back. So I'm going to go over, just straight over from where I am and go through, come out. Then I'm going to go diagonal on the front to make an X. Just like that. And that means I need to make an equal sign. So I'm going to make a line parallel to the line that I already have. You can see I already have like a little red line there. So I'm going to go just parallel to that and push that through. And I'm going to do this about four or five times. So I'm just going to repeat the process. I want to make sure that the back is very neat. So I should be coming through roughly the same area every time and just be going over the same equal sign um, because otherwise it would get messy. So I'm going to do my diagonal in the front again. I'm just following the same pattern. Equal sign on the back. Diagonal on the front. So I'm trying to keep my back very, very neat because it can get very ugly very fast if we're not careful. And I'll maybe do this a couple more times. Okay. So now my button's feeling pretty good. I've gone over it maybe five times. And I'm going to go to the back one last time. And here's where it gets tricky, okay? So watch carefully. I will go through making my equal sign again, but I'm not gonna go through the button again. I'm just gonna go through the fabric. So if you, you see right here, I'm coming between the button and my fabric, and I'm coming just, I'm poking right through that same hole, but I'm not going through the hole of my button right here. Instead, I'm just gonna come through in between the fabric, okay? So I'll pull it through right there. And then I'm gonna do something called a shank. And the purpose of a shank is just, well, it's two purposes. First, it helps kind of make the button stronger because it protects all these threads right here. It creates another layer around each of the threads. And it also lifts up my button so that the button hole has a place to go because right now my button's like right up next to my fabric. And if I had the button hole to like, if this was a shirt and I needed to close it off, um, I need a place for the button hole to go and it needs to go in between the button and the fabric. So I'm gonna create a shank, which essentially means I will wrap my fabric around my button, my thread around my button five times here. So I'm gonna go around one time, around two times, around three times, four times, and five times. Anytime I wanna pull it pretty tight, you can see right here, those layers. So I'm going to pull those fairly tight. Sometimes it kind of scrunches up my fabric, especially if I have a bigger button. Like right now, it's kind of doing that. Um, and something you can do to avoid that is if you actually put like a little pin when you're sewing your button, you just put a pin right here and you pull it out. So like if I just had a pin, if I sewed my button with a pin right here, it just kind of creates a little extra space. So then when I take the pin out, I have more space for my shank. So that's another thing you can do. Um, but after I've pulled my shank pretty tight, I'm gonna go back through my fabric. So, oh, sorry, you're kind of out of focus. So I'm just gonna take my needle and I'll go back through to my backside. And I wanna come out somewhere that's not gonna make a huge mess. I'm gonna try and come out next to one of my red lines that are already there. And I'll pull that. And then I'm going to go back to the middle again. So I'll follow my equal sign. You can see my equal sign right here. I'm just going to follow it, go on the other side of this line. And I'm just going to go through the fabric, not the needle again, just like I did before. Oh, I just pulled it out. So I'll do that again. Pull it through here. Pull it up. And now I'm going to tie everything off with a knot. So to make my knot, I will take a tiny little bite of fabric, teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, maybe like one or two strands of thread, really. And I'm going to pull my needle a little bit, but not all the way. Like, I'm not going to pull it tight. Right now I have this loop, so I'm going to go back up through my loop. And now I'll pull it tight, so it's tying a knot. And I'll do that one more time. This time I'll just kind of grab the red thread of my knot, and then I'm going to pull it a little bit. I'll come back up through my knot, and then pull it tight. Now I just need to trim my threads and my button is sewn on.
So here I have a button with an X on the front, equal sign on the back. It could be reversed for you. You could have X on the back, equal sign on the front. Either way, you want it to be very neat and nice. And that is how you sew a button.